Welcome to the Lindsay and Tony podcast, where we talk about spirituality, business, and life experiences. In this podcast, we're bringing our private conversations to you. We believe that it's through discussion, action, and reflection that true change occurs. Welcome to episode 46, why your anxiousness might be a sign that you're not effectively using your psychic awareness. In this episode, you will learn how anxiety can be created through suppressing your psychic awareness with your decisions, in your relationships, and in every area of your life. I hope you enjoy the show. Hi guys, welcome back. We're so excited that you're here. Today we are talking all about how your anxiousness may be a sign that you're not really using your psychic awareness. And I feel like this is something that everyone has. Don't you believe that everyone's psychic in some sort of way? I feel like it. I feel like everybody is psychic because we're all born with our brain and everybody has a capability to tune into other people's energy, mm-hmm. at least yeah. on that psychic level to where they could feel everybody else's emotions and you know different things like that. Right. And I think there's some people that are extra, extra open where you're so aware that you feel like your heart is pumping out of your chest. I know there's been times where I've almost been in a panic attack when it came to um, just feeling everything. Exactly. Especially like me growing up, like just being inside places like I talk about a lot on this podcast. It it was overwhelming for for me Mm -hmm. because I was not using my psychic ability effectively. So I was like, you know, people pleasing and doing all that stuff that we talk about in these podcast episodes. And that wasn't honoring my psychic awareness because I'd be feeling, you know, intuitively picking up things like, oh, I need to say this to them. But I'm like, no, I'm not gonna say that because if I say this, it's gonna step on their toes, Mm -hmm. create all kinds of chaos and all that. So then, you know, you suppress it little by little each time. Yeah, and and I think that's the key word, suppressing it, which I've definitely done over the years. I think when I was little, I grew up in a family that was very, very anxious and they're very, very psychic, even though some of them might not want to admit that. And being in that environment and soaking it all in every day, I just became a mirror for what was in front of me. So there were times where I would really shut down and I was very, very quiet, but then it would come out in anger as a child. I remember kicking and I at school, I'd be like a little angel and I'd come home and my mom would say, how is she so good at school and she's shy, but when she comes home, she's very much to herself where she gets angry. But it was because I was holding everything inside and it, and I feel like anxiety turns into anger, don't you? It does, it turns into anger, sadness, all of those different emotions you don't want to feel because it's just telling you that you're not honoring who you are. True. And who we are, which a lot of the world does not like to admit, is psychic. Yeah. So that's like a taboo topic, and I think that's what causes most people to suppress it because they don't want to be looked at as weird. Like, oh, right. they're psychic, because that sounds like psycho. <laughs> you know, so I think maybe if they ch- tweak the word and change it a little bit, yeah. more people would be open to the idea. But all it is simply saying is what all of the greatest minds who studied psychology and studied the mind, what they have been telling us for, I don't know, a thousand years right. or more, um, they say it over and over. If you look into the pieces of information, I bring up Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, a lot because he talks about psychic ability in there, how our brains are electronic switching stations to where mm-hmm. we could pick up vibes you know, or frequencies and we could send them out. And this needs to be like a topic that is normal, it I needs think, to be in, school. in the school systems from starting in kindergarten, even pre-K, so kids can understand that, look, you are psychic mm-hmm. and these are ways that you develop it because without having that understanding that we are that, then we never develop it. And then it's like what Lindsay and we were just talking about, we start to suppress it and then it starts to create anxiety, anger, and you see a lot of kids acting out and even adults acting out because they're not tuning into that part of them. Right, and I found when I was teaching third grade, the kids that were labeled ADHD um, and, and had some sort of anxiety disorder, they were the kids that were highly sensitive psychically. And I, I knew it because I could hear the conversations that would go on. Um, well, I remember one of the, actually, two instances um, that I can share about was actually three. One little girl had a lot of trouble focusing and she was sitting in class in her seat and 
she got scared because she floated above her body and she said miss marino i just got really scared because i was floating above my body and i looked down and saw myself in the chair and i knew that she was highly sensitive i knew it ran in her family on her mother's side you could just <laughs> being aware of this and tuning in you can recognize that i had another student that used to draw pictures and stories and he was someone that could never sit in his seat and i felt like the school system they trained us to have them not stand up and walk around at different points there were moments where they had to sit still and i feel like that suppresses their their emotions it does because of the school system they i don't believe that it was set out to develop psychic the no. people's psychic awareness so it does absolutely it stops their creativity Anytime a kid is like different, has out of the box type ideas, mm -hmm. in most schools, then those ideas are suppressed and that kid is called weird or schizophrenic or like, you know, different, different names that they'll put on these kids and then it creates more of a taboo topic, like, you know, it just right. keeps reaffirming. That's why I like magnet schools or like mm -hmm. certain charter schools too. And we're not saying every single public school is like this, but a lot of them restrict you to sit down and take a test yes. and that's it. Um, yeah. But the third child that I was talking about, he was extra, extra sensitive. And there were certain points where he would go into certain classes and get in trouble. In my class, I felt like I knew him on a soul level without him even realizing it. But he, he spoke up and shared different experiences. And he lived in a neighborhood where there was violence, gun violence. And most of the kids in my class did. And he was sitting at a, a guided reading table when we were back there. I don't know. I probably told you the story. And mm -hmm. he had a vision of something that was coming up in his future. And he saw a van and people he knew and there was um, gun violence and he was in tears. And it, you have to tread lightly if you're a, a teacher in the school system. So, you know, I had to turn it around in a way that I could share, but I got him to write it down on paper and that sort of thing. But I think it's important. Some people use the, the term like, get in touch with your emotions <clears throat> and I feel like that's psychic awareness, getting in touch with your psychic awareness, really. It is. And if you, if the people, if they suppress their psychic awareness so long, it starts to get confusing on what is your psychic awareness, yeah. anxiety, and then what is like actually your psychic awareness. And I, I also feel like as you were talking about that kid, each, you know, each kid growing up, each person growing up, they have their finger on the pulse of their culture and society. So that I feel like that's what that mm -hmm. kid was going through is he's sensing like, he could sense the, you know, the vibes of the neighborhood. And he, he could feel that something's about to come down, whether it's because he, he's recognizing patterns that every two months this happens or whatever mm -hmm. it is. So I feel like each person is in a different environment like that. And they have all these factors that could cloud their vision, too, because a lot of it, if you live in a rough neighborhood or if you grew up that way, a lot of these fears could still be in you even though you're out of the neighborhood yeah so then you're true. constantly reacting and that's suppressing your psychic ability because you're you're in fear mode that's so true that's so true and i think this is so important to talk about and think about what kind of situation are you in right now that you're comparing to 10 years ago or what your how your family lived and what experiences are going to come up for you too but i think the big reason that i felt so guided we felt guided to do this podcast was because us, ourselves, we've experienced that feeling of anxiousness and it's normally when we're not using this psychic ability to tune in. So some ways you can use your psychic ability or use your energy is to actually imagine light or energy coming from your hands. And if you have a dog or a cat or some sort of animal, put your hands on the dog or the cat. Start using your energy that way. If you don't have an animal in the house, look outside at a tree or birds and start sending um, energy through your eyes and imagine that light going out and really use your energy to, to work. It doesn't mean you're going up to people and giving them psychic readings. That's not what we're saying at all. Um, but what other ways do you think that they could use? Which that's yourself? another way too, if, if, that feel, if you feel pulled to do that. Because me personally, I feel pulled I to know. that at times, but I know like most people, they're, they're maybe not at that level. But if you're at, that, if you're at other levels, it's as simple as, when you psychically get that you need to make a different decision, even though it's ass backwards compared to what you think you should do, mm -hmm. you have to trust that and honor that. Yeah. Because what a lot of people will do is they won't trust that. They'll intuitively know that this is the decision I should be making, but then yet they still make this, this decision. So that action alone is teaching yourself that you're not honoring yourself once again. And like, so 
on the opposite flip end is start to honor those decisions. So whenever you feel psychically that you need to make a certain decision, even though it's painful mm -hmm. and you don't think you're supposed to do it, just honor it and you will start to see that as you do this more and more, you'll start to ride this wave that I call. And it's like scary. It's scary riding the wave. It's mm -hmm. scary riding any wave. But you'll start to like, once you make one decision, it'll be easier to make the next and the next and the next. Yes. So that's a tip that I have is like, when it comes to decisions, I think people struggle with making decisions because they confuse with fear and all these other things. and what's logical will start trusting that psychic decision mm -hmm. that you that everybody has that gut instinct right and don't think necessarily about the timing of it like oh is this the right time or should i check in with my friends and and see if they think i should do it because a lot of the people that you ask are going to have their their own fears get in the way of your decision so you might mm -hmm. ask your mom for advice and your mom says no don't do it now wait for the trip till next year but really it's her fear of letting you go on the trip and I'm thinking of that as an example because it was actually right before I left for my trip for Australia where I had my first panic attack. At the time I was going through like a tough time in my life with a breakup and then school, I couldn't focus on it. My best friend's dad died all at the same time and I had to leave to go to Australia. And I wanted to go to Australia, but I had so much fear inside because my mom kept on saying, why don't you just wait till you graduate? Can you see her saying that? Yeah, she... Just wait till she you was graduate. I could see because she would be anxious to, <laughs> to let, let her little go. sweet angel travel all across the world. <laughs> she's I don't, like, you're 20, I don't blame her, but yeah. that, that happens she's a like, lot, you're going to be across the world, and it's 24 hours away for me to get to you. Why don't you just wait? You could wait. And then I'm thinking of my older sister saying, the one regret that I had in college was I didn't get to go to study abroad. So this kind of thing can play out where you... But luckily, I went. I did have a panic attack. But it, it was a growing experience to actually leave and, and follow through with it, even though there was so much fear behind it. But you still made the decision. And I bet looking back, you realize that, wow, yes. that was like a foundation for me teaching myself, I need to trust myself and right. make those decisions. That's true. That's true. So I think, and I know that Tony's helped me with this, and we've talked about it before, but working out is so important because you can use your, your energy, that powerful psychic energy, body, mind, and soul energy through working out, that releases and moves it so it doesn't feel so stuck and stagnant. And that's exactly what it's about is moving that energy. So like Lindsay said, pushing it out of your hands or mm -hmm. working out is huge. Everybody, if you're a human, you should work out. Yeah. I mean, you have bodies that are meant to, to move so you can move that energy because what's happening is the reason why you're having all of this anxiety or one of the reasons is because you're soaking in everybody else's emotions and you're feeling everything. You're feeling stuff on the other side of the planet a lot of times and you don't even realize it. So if you just let that just stay stagnant in you and you're not using that and moving it and you're owning it like it's your own, which mm -hmm. I think a lot of people do is they think that that's who they are. When in all reality, it's like, no, you're just absorbing other people's energy and the world's energy and you just have to learn how to keep on moving it. I feel like, you know, like water, if you keep having water constantly running it stays mm -hmm. fresh well we're 80 percent water so if we stay constantly flowing our emotions yes. our body our health and everything will will continually stay fresh that's so true and as you were just talking about that too i was thinking of a quote that i just saw online um and it, it said something like have you ever had one of those moments where you looked in the mirror through your eyes and you thought oh my gosh how the heck did i get stuck in this body <laughs> like how am i in here and I think it's something to think about if you've ever had one of those moments where you were looking at yourself in the mirror and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm in this body. This isn't even mine. Because if you're psychic, psychically aware, you could easily feel trapped in your own body. Think, oh my gosh, I have to be free because you're a soul in here. So you don't want to get to that point because then it could create a lot of anxiety. It's important to talk about it and to enjoy your earthly time here too while using your psychic gifts. And I would check out different classes, and um, Reiki is a good one to go. There's something called Reiki circles where you can sit around and send healing energy to humans and practice picking up intuitive information if that's approved in that, in that circle too. Yeah, and it's really any, any hobby that you enjoy doing is going to help develop your psychic ability. It's, gonna, mm -hmm. it's going to help develop every ability for you because when you're doing the hobbies that you love, you're enjoying and you're feeling good mm -hmm. and your, your frequencies are raising, which means that you're having better thoughts, more clarity with psychic awareness and yeah. all of that. So I think it's about just continually moving, going to pursue your different hobbies, doing things that you enjoy and moving, you know, not staying stagnant too long. Exactly. 
So I think that's it for this episode because we could talk about this for hours. Yes. But I feel like the main the main thing is is to use your energy, don't suppress it. It is, and and another thing is to understand if you're not using your psychic awareness yet, you have to understand the joy and the fulfillment that comes with expressing this gift. Whether you're doing readings for people or whether you're just doing readings for yourself, meaning mm -hmm. like you're using it to make decisions to to be a better dad or whatever, a better husband or whatever you're, whatever you are, um, to just show mother. up better, better, better mother, friend, everything, friend, daughter. whatever you are. So I think that's, that's, that's it right thing. there. Well, we hope you enjoy this episode. Share with us if you've ever had these experiences where before you used this ability or your gifts, you felt more anxious. And now that you're using it, you feel different because we want to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. If you liked it, leave a five-star review on iTunes. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel too. If you can think of anyone else that would love this episode, share it with them right now on social media or email. And remember, getting results is a process of learning, applying, and reflecting. Stay consistent and continue to grow every day.